We have breaking news. Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosselló resigned Wednesday night amid growing protests. The outrage began nearly two weeks ago after obscenity-laced online chats between Rosselló and his advisors leaked to the public. David Begno has the latest. We are in San Juan as I file this report. It is 1.30 in the morning. The governor of Puerto Rico has resigned in a shocking announcement. I say shocking because all day there were questions of whether or not he was going to. Was he? Would he not? There was a report that he had worked out a deal to resign, then backed out of that deal. Protesters had taken to the street. Uh, events were tense energy was high it was dramatic it was peaceful there were more than 70 uh, law enforcement officers in riot gear who were on the property uh, the governor's staff called a news conference told reporters that somebody was going to make a statement but they didn't say who and they didn't say what they held they kept reporters sort of held up in a room for an hour and then walked in and said oh okay well we're going to do something different outside uh, come to find out that is when we believe it was basically a ruse that's when we believe the governor uh, was taken out the back of the mansion and left uh, la fortaleza as it is known um, for ricardo rosello to say i am resigning is gratifying to the close to a million people who have protested over the last week demanding his ouster why it all started. The final straw was a telegram chat that was leaked, 889 pages published by the Center for Investigative Reporting that detailed some really horrific things that the governor uh, said along with 11 of his associates. But beyond being horrific in terms of profane and vulgar and misogynistic and racist and homophobic, uh, there were things that he said that uh, some observers believe uh, amounted to corruption. And so people took to the streets to protest, but they also would say when you interviewed them, listen, it's not just about the chats, it's about the decades of corruption. It's about the decades of leadership that has driven this island into bankruptcy. And then the lowest point for so many people here was Hurricane Maria, of course. But those chats were a final straw for, the final re for, for this reason. And I'll never forget a woman saying, she said, you know, those chats verified and validated everything we had suspected. Essentially, we all know politicians lie. We all suspect there are things going on behind the scenes that may not be on the up and up. But you don't often get 889 pages of chats to verify your suspicions of corruption. The governor of Puerto Rico said he was going to hang on. He, you know, he said, hey, I'm sorry, I apologize for what I said, but I was elected and I'm going to continue to do good work. And that's how I'm going to sort of rebuild the trust with people. And the protesters just would not hear a word of it. And so mark the date. Thursday, July 25th, the governor of Puerto Rico announces he is resigning. This is a historical day. These marches were led by millennials. You would see people on the front lines who were 14 years old. And when you asked them why they were there, they had an articulate, compelling answer. It is a day of history. The question is who replaces the governor? That is yet to be decided because the governor's number two secretary of state resigned as part of the chat scandal. So the governor actually doesn't resign until August 2nd. He has the next week to decide whether he's going to appoint a new secretary of state. And if he doesn't, the interim governor will be Wanda Vasquez, who is currently Puerto Rico's secretary of justice. I'm David Begno, reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico.